the singers lift up our hands and worship him for the next five minutes. Worship him for the next five minutes. Worship the I am that I am for the next five minutes. Shut up. Now, in the good and 
If not for God, what would have happened? If not for God, tell me, where do you think we would have been by now? There are so many of us here at the verge of death, at the verge of danger. The Lord stretched forth his hand and pulled us back. So many things that we came out of, some people went through and they passed on. Father! Father! How can we worship you enough? How can we worship you enough? How oh, can we worship you enough that we are alive now is not our strength? It is a privilege. Privilege. It is a privilege. What's a privilege? What's a privilege, Lord? Privilege of relationship. Privilege of life. It's not a matter of it's our rights. It's a privilege. And we're not taking this privilege for that.
I just sense in my spirit that there's somebody here. I don't know why God loves you this much. I don't know. It doesn't matter what is happening now, but the love of God on you is too much. It's too much. Too much. It's too much. Excess love. Excess love. Death. Death start looking for, for us. From, from our mother's womb, death start looking for us. The part you started from our mother's womb. Father, what, what a love. 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 If you can be seated, if you can, anybody on the floor, leave the person. Chapter 51, verses 10 to 11. Create in me a clean heart. So a clean heart is created. and renew a right spirit within me. When you become born again, it's not out of order to pray and asking God to create in you a clean heart. Cast me not away. From thy presence. Because the presence of God in a man's life is the greatest asset of that man. And take not the anointing Please, don't take away your Holy Spirit from me. Don't take away the Holy Spirit from me. This is God's exalted word. 
and make demand that the Lord will bless the reading of his word. In Jesus' name. This month is the month of the anointing. We are looking at how to sustain the anointing. This is part two. How to sustain the anointing. How the anointing can be sustained. Lord, you better don't lay your hands on my head. Than you laid your hands on my head and I wasted it. It is better. Oil is not poured on my head. It's better. Not to pour oil on my head than to pour oil on my head and it is wasted. Anointing can be gotten, anointing can be lost. What happened to that your spiritual gift? What happened? What happened to that your prayer life? You were once an intercessor. What happened? You were once a soul winner. What happened? What happened to your dedication and commitment? What happened to your passion for God? What happened? What happened to that grace? You pray for the sick, they are healed. What happened? What happened to your fire? What happened to your consecration? What happened to your integrity? Beloved brothers and sisters, it is better not to get anointed than to get anointed and lose it. It's better. Every time I read the story of Samson, I feel bad. I feel bad. Every time I read the story of Samson, that man that died on the laps of Delilah. Look at the anointing. Can I tell you briefly what the anointing did in the life of Samson? One day, himself and his parents were going. Maybe the parents were in front and he was behind. And then all of a sudden, a lion just roar. He was not prepared for to kill a lion. He was just going. And the Bible recorded that. He held the lion with bare hands, pieces the lion. And he didn't tell his parents that mommy, daddy had just killed the lion. That was, that was the anointing in the life of Samson. Another time, he went to the camp of the enemies and killed 30 of them. And removed their garments. And gave out the garments as gifts to people that interpreted his riddle. Another time, he, he caught 300 foxes. Foxes, you know fox? Foxes. 300, he caught them by the anointing. Another time, he used the jawbone of a donkey and killed 1,000 Philistines. But that same Samson, that same Samson, died not as a victor, but as a victim. He died not as a victim, but as a victim. What happened to Samson? There was a time in his life they plucked his two eyes. Samson's eyes, who born you? Who born you? The two eyes were plucked. Samson died a disgraceful death. He lost the anointing. When God is coming, you will know. But when he's living, you may not know. He lives gradually. 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 Samson. Samson, the Philistines are here. He rose like other time. But not knowing that the Lord had departed. God. God is gone. God is gone. God is gone. It's better. It's better not to toss, test spiritual gifts than to test and mess it up. It's better. It's better. It's better. Not to receive consecration from God. And then you lose it. It's better. It's better. Affect my life. Breathe on me as I look to you for life. Affect my life. Breathe on me as I look to you for life. Affect my life. Breathe on me, daddy, as I look to you for life. Affect 
my life. Breathe on me as I look to you. God is in heaven weeping, weeping because treasures are missing. Treasures are missing. Giftings are missing. Graces are missing. Anointing is no more on the head of people. People are living on their past glory. Not knowing that the Lord had departed. How can the anointing be sustained? All in all, in all of the, of the three services before we have the fourth one, there are six ways. But I will show you two. I show them two in the first service. Staying in the world. <laughs> if you want to sustain the anointing, stay in the world. Stay! Stay in the world. Stay. 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 Don't be out of touch with the world. <laughs> this week that just ended, we are start, we are already started another week. This week that just ended, I covered the book of New Testament under, under six days. Under six days. I started on Monday. Stay! <laughs> Stay in the world. Because the word of God is self-anointed. John chapter 6 and in verse 63. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. <laughs> distance from the world is distant from the anointing. John chapter 15 and in verse 7 says, If ye abide in me, and my words, John chapter 15, verse 7. And my words abide in you. You shall ask what you want. And it shall be done. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. There are transactions that we show. One of those transactions is the permanent oil that you, that you will ever carry. Permanently on your head. <laughs> if the word of God departs from you, the anointing one day will depart from your life. If the word of God departs from you, one day, it's a matter of time, one day, one day, you will be dry you be dry. He will fill my heart today to overflow. He was the Lord command. He bring your verses. He will fill my heart to overflow. He will the Holy Ghost. Brother, sister, are you not tired of disappointing God? Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired? I want you to look at your life 20 years ago when you were on fire. Look at your life 15 years ago when you were on fire. You were not even well placed like you are placed now. Is it a placement? Is it a placement? We should not disappoint divine agenda. We should not disappoint divine agenda. We should not. We should not. So, if you want to sustain the anointing, you make the word of God your nearest companion. Your nearest companion. Good news. <laughs> this word I just said from God, God says it's for four persons here, four of you. He said, I am going to, in your life, replace shame with dignity and honor. Where are the four people? Take it. Whatever that looks like shame in your life in this second service, I declare that as you are living, the shame shall die here. Honor and dignity, dignity shall come up. Honor and dignity shall come alive. Somebody shall yes! Trust me. Number two. 
Number two. By being constant, consistent in fellowship. Number two way to sustain the anointing or giftings or whatever grace the Lord has by privilege released on you. Consistent in fellowship. Consistent in fellowship. Consistent in fellowship. In your personal fellowship with God and in the fellowship of the brethren. Psalm 84 and in verse 7. Psalm 84, verse 7. The Bible says, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. So, fellowship, communion with God. Every time you appear before God, your strength increases. The meaning of this is, when you stop appearing before God, your strength decreases. When you appear before God, there is an increase of strength. The, the, every one of them that appeared in Zion, they go from strength to strength. Strength to strength means your strength is increasing. And the meaning of that also is, and every one of them that do not appear before the Lord in Zion, they go from what? You go from weakness to weakness. <laughs> and when you start, when your strength start going down, you start losing strength. Start losing strength. All of a sudden, you will discover that there's no more strength to fast. No more strength to pray. No more strength to study the word. When was the last time you said, I want to give myself consecrational fast. I want to fast for 24 hours. Not to ask God for favor. I want to set myself on fire. When was the last time you did that? When? When? When was the last time you said, I want to sit down and study the scripture for one hour non-stop. Phone, switch off or on silence. Please understand that where fellowship with God stops is where failure starts. Write it down. Both in your jota and your mind. Where fellowship with God stops is where failure starts. Media, put this on the media, social media. Where fellowship with God stops is where failure starts. It's where failure starts. It's where failure starts. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not neglecting the assembly of ourselves together. As the manner of some. Very important. I add this because the Lord said I should keep speaking on it. And that's why I'll keep speaking on it. Because the real evangelism today is the reflection of the hand of God on your life. That is real evangelism. The reflection of God's hand on your life. You want me to know Christ because God has blessed you? Let me see the blessing. Let me see the blessing. If I see the blessing, you don't need to tell me. I will walk up to you. I say, please, let me know what is the secret of this blessing. The Lord said, keep saying it. It doesn't matter what people are saying. You know what I want to talk about? What is not tight? As we close. What is not tight? What is not tight? I'd like you to get an understanding of it. What is not tight? What is not tight? People make all manner of comments. But one thing I, 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 can, I, can, I told myself. That anything that I am doing. That I have found in this scripture. And is working for me. Nobody can stop me. Nobody can talk me out of it. Nobody. Nobody can use scripture to com com confuse me. I told them in the first service, me and mommy went for a meeting in, in a church. One young pastor growing, coming up. He said, people don't need to fast again. He said, there's no need for people to fast. That Jesus already fasted our fast. 
say the fort, uh, uh, okay, 40, is it 40 days? He said the 40 days fasting. He fasted for all of us. What? Pastor, say no need for fasting. Hi. Is it not this work I'm doing? <laughs> Tithes is not any amount you feel like dropping. That's number one. This thing has a way of opening up your life for blessing. This thing, please, please let this thing enter you. Let just like something has entered into somebody's blood. Let tithe enter your blood. It's time for tithe. Say, ushers, give me an envelope. I'll just put five on anything. No. If it is not ten percent, it is not tithe. If your tithe is hundred naira and you drop ninety nine naira point. Uh, you have not succeeded in tithing. <laughs> you have not succeeded in tithing. Number two, tithe is not offering. It's not offering. There's, 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 there's a difference between tithe and offering. The difference is tithe is a demonstration of your obedience to God. While offering is a demonstration of your love for God. That's the difference. demonstration of your love. So when you drop your offering, for those of you that don't know, when you drop five naira, you say, Lord, I demonstrate my love to you by this five naira. Ten naira. Money that has been rejected by you dropped into the... It's, it's, it's an expression of your love. But every time you, you give out your tithes, it's a demonstration of obedience. So tithes is not offering. Number three, tithe is not a vow. Tithe is not a vow. It's not. Lord, if I marry, trust me, I make a vow, stop paying tithe. Wrong prayer. Tithe is not a vow. And number four, tithe is not a sacrifice. Tithe is not a sacrifice. Your tithe is not sacrificial giving. Your tithe is God's portion that you owe him anytime he blesses you financially. Except you don't want to get God involved in your finances. And then you keep going like that. And let us see how far you will go. Because the, the, the truth of the matter is tithe has the power of transgenerational blessing. I said it to those that were here on Thursday. Of how Abraham tithed and his great grandson inherited the blessing. In Hebrews chapter 7, go and read it. Abraham tithed. As at the time Abraham tithed, his son Isaac had not been born. Jacob had not been born. And it's Jacob that gave birth to Levi. But Abraham's tithe affected that young man. Beloved brothers and sisters, please let's understand that. We are raising up a generation. Let's affect our generation. Let's leave a, a good legacy behind. Let's leave blessing behind. That is a good father. Let's leave something behind. Tithe is not prophet's offering, number five. Tithe is not prophet's offering. When we say prophet's offering, that is, you, you, you value the man of God. You love him, so you say, I give you this. Because of the love and value I placed on you. That is prophet offering. Tight. You don't use your tight and say, ah, this is my, uh, Daddy, I, I came to appreciate you with this. But in your heart, you know it's tight. And you gave, gave the man the impression that you are giving him a prophet offering. No. No. And finally, tight is not a welfare offering. Tight is not a welfare offering. Welfare offering is the offering you give to the needy. Is the offering you give for somebody to be helped? Is the offering you give for somebody to laugh again, to smile again? Okay. So you don't carry your tithe and you are looking for, for any orphanage home available. No. You don't have the right to decide the matter of your tithe. No. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. 
and prove me now. Here we said a lot of host. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be no room enough to contain it. You split your offerings, but you don't split your tithes. You don't. You don't. You don't. <laughs> I prayed for one man, bam, and he, he exploded. <laughs> God's good money. And he told me, that money knows good man. He told me, you see, I have been talking to my pastor about this matter. That means he has a pastor. So I have been talking, and, he, and, and he's, 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 he, has, he has a position in that church. He said, my pastor has been praying. He said, my pastor even calculated the tithe for me. <laughs> he said, since I told my pastor, he said he has been calling me to remind me. The contract has not been given, but the pastor will call him. I say, don't forget the tithe. <laughs> I say, what? He said, not so. He said, not so that they do for East. What? He said, come, come, come. Where are you? Come. How far with that business? Need that. Let me pray. Don't forget the tithe. Ah. So he said, anytime he calls me, he must remind me of the tithe. <laughs> he said, but just one encounter with me. Just one. Told him that this is what will happen. Next day. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> next day. Next day. Bam. Pastor, what do I do know? The tithes must be dropped. Where you are spiritually what? So anytime we are talking on the phone, it's nothing. He say, he say that tight with them collect from us. <laughs> I say no, no, it's, it's okay, it's okay. So beloved brothers and sisters, what of what of what of what of somebody? I prayed for. I was Pastor Koji was with me. Mommy knows the person. Prayed for him, and I I told him, do six days prayer. As soon as you finish, mommy knows the matter. When I traveled to Abuja, he came to meet me. As soon as you finish on the sixth day, congratulations. You know, there are people that don't play with prophetic instruction. And please, everybody hear me. When you are giving a prophetic instruction and you are playing with it, you are, you are killing the communication. You are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are indirectly saying, God, don't speak to me. I'm telling you, but you are not aware. I don't want... On the sixth day, he did the prayer. Huh? On the sixth day, one man showed up. He said, God told me to give you seven million naira. Huh? Eh? Eh? On the, as, he, as he was finishing the prayer, a member of Dunamis said, on the sixth day, seven million. And, and before then, he was planning to to travel outside the country. He was planning to travel outside the country. So, when seven million landed, the road don't open. <laughs> and you know what? When the seven million landed, they couldn't find my number again. Ha! Huh? <laughs> ha! Ah, he looked nowhere. Then we have not started the... Uh, this our... I think we have not started... I think we have not started it. Or maybe he was not aware of something. But, but all of a sudden, he just saw me on Facebook. Say what? But he don't chop the money. <laughs> Seven million, the tithe is how much? 700,000. He said, oh, pastor, are you the one I'm talking to? Where are you now? Australia. Married already with two children. He said, on the sixth day, Pastor, send me your account. I will not tell you the balance of the story. But <laughs> what I am saying is, please, 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 please. When you are following God and you are telling people that God can bless, do what is demanded of you to see the blessing. The blessing is not the problem. The problem is compliance. Rise to your feet. Go forth and have a blessed week. 
that your amen is not coming the way it should come. Everyone in this second service, I speak as your father on your life. I declare that this week you will not be stranded. This week they will not mock you. Anything that will happen around you that will make people laugh you, let this prayer eliminate it out of your life. And anybody here that came into this service, I don't know why God is showing me that picture, that came into this service with a sickness because they gave you food to eat in the dream. But as I speak right now, I declare that after this service, any urine that shall come out of your life, let that sickness come out through that urine. Bless. I wish you a very joyful week. You will laugh throughout this week. It shall be laughter, laughter, laughter. Laughter, laughter, laughter. Laughter, laughter, laughter. If God is giving you favor this week, it shall be SS favor. If God is bringing food your way, it shall be SS food. As you are eating, another person say, take more food, take more food, take more food. Excess food, excess food. So for those of you that love food, congratulations. You are blessed. Give the Lord a clap. <laughs> and please take your seat. <laughs> Hallelujah.